Hi, it's Noel from creationeffects.com and I have a new After Effects template for you guys. It's uh, called Grunge Effects and it has a bunch of effects in it to give your footage some very unique hyper stylized grunge looks. And you can see the image is, is made up of a collage of different textures and it comes with a, a library of texture photos so you can choose different textures and get a bunch of different looks. Or you can also just use one of the presets so you, you just drop in your footage and you can export something like you're seeing right now. And all of the effects are customizable using slider controls. All right, this is a tutorial for using the template, so I'm going to take you through it right now. It's not that hard. I'll uh, show you the presets first, and then I'll show you how to make your own grunge effect. And lastly, I'll go over some of the extra effects that are included here. So after you download the zip file from the site, unzip it, and you'll see the project file. And just open that up, and you'll see this comp called Getting Started. And it has some instructions in there. You'll actually find instructions comps like these throughout the template in most of the folders. And if you're following the video tutorial, you can probably just ignore them because I, I think the video explains things better. Anyway, the first thing it tells you to do here is import your footage and put it in the comp named your footage here. So I'll go to import and I'll get this clip of a penguin. And I'll drag that into the your footage comp. Now, to get the best results, we need this footage to have a good dynamic range. In other words, the brightest areas should be pure white and the darkest areas should be pure black. So I'll add a levels effect, go to effect and color correction and levels. And you can see there's no information here on this side of the histogram, which means that this footage is underexposed. So I'll correct that by just sliding this arrow inward to where the wave starts. And if there's a blank area on this side, you would do the same thing with this arrow. So now our footage is properly exposed and the final effect will look better. I want to show you the presets first. So I'll open the Grunge Effects Presets folder. Uh, you can see there are five here. To preview what they look like with your footage, open this comp, Grunge Effects Preview. And you can see there are yellow and blue layers here. Blue layers are the presets, so to preview one, just isolate it like this and then play. And these yellow layers are copy and paste effects, which you can preview as well, and I'll, I'll go over those later in the video. So when you find a preset that you like, you can double click it to open it up, or you can find it in its folder here. And when you open it, you'll see a layer at the top called Control Layer. Select that, and then in your Effect Controls panel, you'll see dozens of slider controls for customizing the look of that effect. And if you're not seeing this panel, just go to Window, and then click on Effect Controls. And also, you want to make sure your animation presets are hidden, so go to this little drop-down menu here and make sure that Show Animation Presets is not checked. I'm not going into detail about all of these controls. Um, each of these presets are built a little differently, so they, they each have different controls. Um, so you can just play with them and see what they do. They all have an option to turn on an outline, which will make the subject in your video more recognizable. And you should see some threshold controls, and those will let you adjust how much of each texture that you see. So you don't have to do anything with these controls. Uh, they're all optional, so you can just go with the default settings if you want. But one thing that you do have to do before you render is uh, turn on the stop motion effect layer. So just unhide it like this. Uh, the layer has a posterized time effect on it, and if you're using After Effects Creative Suite, uh, this effect won't give you any trouble. But I've discovered that it can cause some huge preview delays in Creative Cloud, and it makes it so that you can't preview your changes in real time uh, when you're customizing the effect. Um, at least if you're using Creative Cloud. So I just have it off by default, and you should keep it off while you're customizing, and then when you're ready to preview it or render it, uh, just turn it back on, uh, because it is an important effect. And uh, when you turn it on, it may take 30 seconds or more for that first frame to load here. Um, but after that first frame comes up, uh, the rest of the video will render at a normal speed. 
All right, let's talk about making your own grunge effect. Uh, you can see these presets are all made with different textures. There's scribbles, there's vintage typography, and there's a painterly one. So in this folder, you have the ability to choose your own textures and make a custom grunge effect, which could be useful if you want to make something that's unique or if you want to use textures that fit with the theme of your video. Like if your video is about kids, you could use children's paintings. So you get the idea. There's a, um, there's a whole bunch of textures to choose from if you look in the dynamic textures folder here. Dynamic textures are animated textures that use one or more high resolution photos. And the photos are continuously and randomly being flipped and rotated and moved around and blended together so that no two frames ever look the same. And there's paper and paint splatters and rusty metal and just all kinds of textures that make up these effects. Uh, there's a bunch of finished dynamic textures in here in the miscellaneous textures folder and in the paper textures folder here. And these dynamic textures are using the photos from the image library, which is here. So you have two options for creating your own grunge effect. You can use the pre-made dynamic textures in here, which is option one, and that's a little quicker. Or if you want, you can make your own dynamic textures by choosing which photos are used, and that's option two here. Unless you want to use your own photos or have a random mix of photos, I would recommend just using option one here. So let me show you that one first. I'll open that and open the step one folder. And you can see that we have three comps, texture dark, texture light, and texture medium. The final effect separates your footage into three portions, the lightest areas of the footage, the darkest areas, and then the medium areas. So the dynamic textures that we put inside these three comps will actually be replacing those portions of your footage. So that means that we want a brighter texture in the texture light comp, a little bit darker texture in the medium comp, and so on. So inside the dynamic textures folder, I'll open this preview comp here, which lets you see all of the textures. And I'll unhide the ones I want to preview. And if you want your final effect to be a little crazy, you can choose three different textures. But I want this one to be a little more cohesive. So I'm going to make duplicates of one texture and use those. I'll use these two wood textures, wood chopped and wood fence. And I'll duplicate one of them so we have three all together. To get more contrast in the final effect, I want to make one really bright, one medium bright, and then one a little darker. So, And since these textures end up being composited over each other, they look darker in the final effect than they look in these comps. So you don't really have to make them that dark. Um, but to make your adjustments, you open a dynamic texture comp and select the control layer and then look for the brightness control or the lightness control and increase or decrease that. This one's pretty bright already, so I'll call the, that one light. And the next one can be a little darker. Like that. I'll call it medium. And the darkest one can be kind of a medium dark. Um, I'll just change the blending mode of this to multiply like that. OK, I'll close that. And then I can copy and paste these three comps I made into the light, medium, and dark comps. I'll uh, move on to step two, which is actually optional. If you want, you can open your effect, your final effect here, and preview it. And if you like it, then you're done. You can just export it as it is. Or you can see the control layer here again. So you can play with the controls and customize the look of the final effect. So that was option one. Option two is similar, but it involves finding individual photos rather than dynamic textures. 
Um, the photos can be found in here in the image library folder, which has 162 photo textures in it. Or like I mentioned, you can import and use your own photos if you want. I'll open the step one folder and we can see our light, medium, and dark textures again. I'll open the light texture and you can see there are some default images in here. All we need to do is swap them out. So I'll go to our image library and look for some photos. Let's, let's go with a newspaper texture for the, for the light photos. And here's a very useful trick for swapping out source files. Select both the layer you're swapping and the item that's going to replace it. And then hold down the Alt or Option key and just click and drag the item onto the layer. And what that does is it changes the source file of this layer while preserving all of the settings, effects, uh, blending modes, and anything else that this layer has. So that's how we're going to bring in all of our, all of our photos for the three comps here. We'll just hold down the Option option if you're on a Mac or Alt if you're on a PC. And with them both selected, just drag and drop. I'll do it again with a third layer. I'll uh, choose Newspaper 3. So these photos were pretty bright, and we don't really need to do anything to make this texture brighter. But if we wanted, we could play with the brightness or the lightness control. Um, the goal, the ultimate goal for this texture light comp is to make the overall brightness pretty high. And real quick, I'll do my next two comps. I'll open Texture Medium. And I'll replace those default images with something else. I'll go with these uh, watercolor textures. I'll replace these holding down the Option key. And this is pretty bright. I'll change this blending mode to multiply. And it's still bright. So here's something you can do. Just select a layer and duplicate it. Now, this layer will have its own random movement to it. So it won't look like the other layer that I just duplicated. And I'll make a small brightness adjustment on the control layer. OK, one last time, I'll do the dark texture. I'm going to stick with the watercolor textures, but I'll go with the watercolor doodles this time. And I know I'll want this darker, so I'll duplicate this one a few times. And then I'll replace them with new images uh, since they're there and, and so I can get more variety. And just real quick, I'll show you some of the other options on the control layer here. You don't need to mess with any of this stuff. It's just here if you want to play around a little. So you can see these layers are all wiggling around. Uh, so you can set how far they move with this position wiggle amount. And keep in mind that this bottom layer that says background moves around half as much as the other layers. And that's to help ensure that the comp stays covered by a texture at all times. Um, you can change the scale of the textures here. You can turn on or off random rotation. So like for textures with text on them, you can make it so that the text stays horizontal. Uh, all of these controls are pretty self-explanatory, I think. And then these last controls called layer blinking controls, uh, I don't think you'll need to use these in this template. Um, these dynamic textures were created for another template, so some of this stuff is just not that relevant here. Uh, but just so you know, you can set the layers to turn on and off randomly with uh, these controls. All right, I think we're ready to view our final effect. It won't usually take you nearly this long. I just wanted to show you everything that you could do. So let's open the, that comp in the uh, step two folder, your, your grunge effect. And we can preview it. And also, you see this uh, dynamic texture here called stained paper. This is overlaid over the whole thing to make it look like it's all on paper. 
So you can delete this and drag in any paper texture that you want from the paper textures folder. There's crinkled paper and construction paper and notebook paper and a bunch of options. So just drag it in and then set the blending mode to multiply and you're set. And above that layer, this stop motion effect at the top here is important, so let's go over that. I uh, already mentioned that it's off by default uh, because it causes problems in After Effects Creative Cloud. So you want to leave that off while you customize and then turn it on before you export. Uh, but let's talk about what it does. This is the effect that gives the video that low frame rate. So it makes it choppy and uh, it also randomly wiggles the position of the video and it fluctuates the, uh, the scale and the rotation and the, and the exposure. Uh, so all these little changes happen every few frames um, and it gives the video a sort of a crude handcrafted look. Kind of like if somebody took a photo of some artwork and then snapped another photo and another and then edited them all together. And uh, you can customize the settings of the, that stop motion effect here on the layer uh, using the, these controls. And that's just one of the effects that I included in the preview comp, if you remember. I'll uh, go back to the grunge effects preview comp. And there's these yellow layers that I mentioned earlier. And you see the stop motion effect here. And then there's the smudge shading effect. I'll turn on my footage layer at the bottom here so that we can see what those do. Smudge shading softens parts of the image without blurring the edges. Uh, the turbulence effect will add some distortion to your image, which can make it look a little more handmade, like you uh, cut out all of these textures by hand and you didn't do a perfect job. The outline effect adds an outline so that uh, you can see your subject better. And the add color from footage could be useful to you uh, because a lot of these textures are colorful and your final effect might have all kinds of crazy colors, which could be good, but maybe you don't want that. So you turn on this effect and it will keep all the, the texture, but just restore the colors of your footage. So it's a little less dramatic. So any of these layers, you can just copy and paste them into your final effects comp. Uh, just place it above the other layers because it'll affect all the layers beneath them. And then remember, you can customize the settings on any of these effects by selecting the layer and then using the controls in the effect controls panel. So that about does it. You can see there's a lot of options that I didn't go over, but it's all optional. So it should really only take you a few minutes to create a, a cool grunge style effect now that you know how it works. So best of luck to you all. Uh, remember to subscribe to the Creation Effects channel or like Creation Effects on Facebook, and then you'll uh, stay up to date on new products. And also you can find some of these effects and many others in the uh, Creation Art Effects template, which is a huge collection of artifacts, which lets you turn your video into artwork made in just about any medium that you want.